Hi guys, I'm Warcraft Hamster, and I wanted to share with you today a new tool that I've picked up. Um, now, this was from a chap in the UK named Nick Westerman, um, very well known in sort of UK circles. Um, and what it is, it is a Twicker cam. Um, now, my understanding of this is that it's it's um, a Welsh tool, um, and it roughly translates as bent knife. Um, now, basically, in my opinion, it's, it's just basically just a giant version of a spoon knife. Um, if I bring that a little bit closer up to the camera for you, hopefully you'll see what I'm talking about. So it comes unhandled, um, and I'm going to put a handle on this today. Uh, but it's basically just a, a, a very large version of what most of us will be familiar with as a, a, a spoon knife for carving a, a bowl in a spoon. Um, now it's got a lovely mirrored finish on the back edge. Um, you've got one edge here which is um, sort of not sharpened. Um, the other edge very much is sharpened. And just to give you an example, um, I thought I'd bring a piece of paper in. I don't usually bother with cut, cutting tests and things like that, but I thought I'd just show you. Um, I mean, this thing is ridiculously sharp. Um, it came like this out of the box, and I'm putting absolutely no pressure on this whatsoever. Um, so, the idea of this tool um, is that you put a handle on it, um, you can make it to length, you can have it however long you want it. Um, from what I've seen online, um, from some of the research that I've done, you generally have a two-handed um, handle, so you can get both hands like this, and it just means you can get some more leverage, you can exert some more pressure with both with, by using both hands. Um, now, what I've done, I had a, a suitable um, piece of wood, just a little, little uh, sort of half-season branch lying around. Um, I've pre-drilled a hole in this. Um, I just used my normal electric drill for this because it was what I had to hand. Um, and all I'm going to do really is attach the two together. I'm not going to glue it because um, I'm not sure if this is going to be the handle I'm going to keep. I may make another one out of a, a, a more seasoned piece of wood and I'll actually carve the handle rather than having this, uh, this sort of diameter I can sort of make it to suit. Um, but certainly just to get an idea of this um, I thought I'd just give it a go. Um, now the one problem I've got is that the uh, the shaft for this is ever so slightly elliptical which, which means it's going to grip well which is good. Um, however just using hand pressure that's about as far as I can get it in. Um, now because this edge is sharp I can't grab hold of this and try and really ram it in and again because this is a, a got a sweep on it I can't put it like this and try and hammer it down or, or vice versa. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to grab what I think is an old welding glove um, just to give my hand a little bit of protection and see if I can uh, get a bit more really doesn't want to go any further. Okay. We'll try it from there, I think. Right, so what I'm going to do, guys, I'm just going to move the camera a little bit closer in. Um, I've actually got here the beginnings of a bowl, um, which I started a little while ago. Um, I haven't done a video on this yet, but this has basically just been roughed out with a gouge. That's all I've done with it, so you can still see the gouge marks on there. And I just want to see how easy it is to manipulate this um, using using the Twicker cam. Right then guys, so hopefully you can see what I've got set up here. I've just cut, stuck a couple of pegs in here just to hold this bowl in place. Um, here is the Twicker cam and I do hope if there are any Welsh speakers out there I am pronouncing this correctly. Um, and really what I want to do is just sort of start um, smoothing down and enlarging the bowl of the, uh, well, the bowl a little bit basically. Um, now there are a couple of ways you can do this. You can either hold, let me get, move this around a bit, so you can either hold it both hands like this um, and the idea being is that you carry out sort of a, a scooping motion. Um, I have seen people holding it like this as well with sort of the hands reversed from each other and again you can do exactly the same motion. Um, the other, what I'm going to try doing here today um, is basically supporting um, the, the blade or the front edge of the blade with my left hand which is my non-dominant hand and then I'm going to use my right hand which is my dominant one just to, to carry out the, the twisting motion. So in theory I'm, I'm supporting it here, I'm putting a little bit of downward pressure on with, with this hand and then I'm just turning with my other hand and to be honest this is kind of going through like butter at the moment guys. Um, and this is, this is the very first time I've used this, and I must admit, I am very, very impressed. Um, I can certainly, 
after just sort of 30 seconds of using this this blade I can certainly see this becoming one of my staple tools and I mean you know we're getting a good good amount of good sized um, chips coming off of here um, and again this this is absolutely effortless guys there I'm, I'm putting really hardly any pressure at all into this and again there's a nice little knot here uh, which would have been very difficult with the gouge um, and it's just kind of sailing right over it what I have just noticed is that I can't go, try and bite too deeply with this if I try and bite too deeply um, it kind of struggles to go through so you need to keep the sort of the cuts fairly light um, but you sort of see with the with the additional length of the handle on this um, the the light strokes you can kind of just keep going keep going and it's not taking any time at all and it is because you're not putting too much pressure on you're not sort of wearing out your arm and if I just flip this round you know, you're not wearing yourself out because all you're doing is a very small um, motion and because of the elongated handle the small motion is transferring into quite a lot of power at the other end and again it's going to take me a while I think to, to get this perfected and sort of learn the correct techniques for this but straight away here you know I've probably removed and I don't think it's too unrealistic to say maybe twice as much material um, as I would have removed using a, a gouge for the same time period. Right then guys, well that was just intended to be just a very quick introduction video to this tool. Um, there will certainly be more videos uh, with me using this to come. Um, again, my first thoughts, this is a really well made tool, hair poppingly sharp out of the box. Um, but if you're thinking about getting one of these, um, certainly my first impressions is it's very, very good, very well made. Um, by all means, check out Nick Westerman's um, webpage. Um, he's got a lot of traditional uh, style tools on there, all, all hand forged by him, is my understanding. Um, but yeah, really, really nice bit of kit. Um, and I'll, I'll certainly be, be featuring this more um, in, in sort of the coming videos. Um, but I hope it was useful guys, um, like and subscribe if you would like to see more and I hope to see you all next time. Cheers guys.